All right, folks, Dr. Ben Carson, the head of the Department of Housing and Urban Development, faced an intense backlash yesterday after he called poverty a state of mind. Carson, who oversees the department and handles housing for millions of low-income Americans, made the comments during a radio interview on Tuesday with Armstrong Williams, his business partner and also a conservative media personality. During the conversation, Carson said he thought some people were poor because of their outlook on life. I think poverty is, I think poverty uh, to a large extent is also a state of mind. You take somebody that has the right mindset, you can take everything from them and put them on the street, and I guarantee in a little while they'll be right back up there. He would want to add, helping people may not better their lives. You take somebody with the wrong mindset, you can give them everything in the world, they'll work their way right back down to the bottom. <laughs> that doesn't even make no sense. Our panel. You know what? No. Poverty is a state of lack of paycheck. Right. You know, that it's not a state of mind. I mean, this dude is he should have stuck to his lane. He was a brilliant brain surgeon, but somehow somebody did not do surgery on his brain. This is just nonsense, especially it's it's startling because he leads the Department of Housing and Urban Development, which provides people with a leg up, which provides people with opportunity. Not anymore. One of the, one of the biggest expenses that people face is housing. And we know what's happening in the housing market. We see gentrification all over our country. We see people unable to afford. And so for him to suggest that markets are a state of mind is to give us all this Zen space that does not exist in terms of economic reality. Yeah, I, 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 will, I, I will give you what he was going after, and I will give you the problem with how he did it. He was trying to go after, look, part of poverty is also how you approach your situation, how you work and invest yourself moving forward to get out of the economic situation you're in. The problem with how he said it is it always ends up blaming the victim. If you're locked in generational poverty and you're the third generation of that generational poverty, it is what you know, it is what your mom and dad knew, it is what your grandmother and your grandfather knew. So there is something to be said about what's in your bank account, where you live, what schools you go to, and what access you have to resources that when you take this tone that keeps did, unfortunately, it seems to overlook all of that and make it seem as though you're in poverty because it's on you. And that's not how the America that we know really boils down to these days. Right. It's, what, we what know he, this. What he did was he only addressed one aspect of the total picture. That's now, usual for him. But, but and that's that doesn't, problematic. Right. It's prob but it doesn't negate that there is a truism to what he said, that there are segments of the population, black and white, that no matter what you how, try, no matter how you try to help them, they are not going to try to help themselves. No, 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 dirt floor with, with nothing, but they were able to move up oh, out of the that's the four-year-old no, 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 but, 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 but that's, that's not what reality. He said, what he said is there is a truth to what he it, said, here's, but he didn't, as Lenny said, he didn't there's here's the, the problem with the here's, the, here's, the problem with, here's the problem with Dr. Carson doing it. Anytime particularly a black male or a black conservative right. says that the image that most of America puts in their mind is black or is of black people not doing what they need to do to right. get out of poverty. That is why it is irresponsible to say that and not say it completely. If you're not going to give the full picture, don't say it at all because okay. you play into a stereotype. I mean, and you might as well say welfare queen. And, and, and precisely. And here's the other thing that happens, okay? Tell that to all these white folks who are well-to-do in Connecticut and Vermont and New Hampshire who can't kick their opioid addiction. Hello. Uh -oh. Western Pennsylvania. Hold up. Talk about that. Talk about... Uh, this town in West Virginia where they dropped four million pills and no matter what you do, no matter what kind of help you give, it can't help themselves. The reality is this here, because we know how, to your point about stereotypes, how it is played. Somebody hears that and they go, oh, yep. black guy yep. talking to a black guy, yep. he talking about those people. Mm -hmm. And here's the reality. And Harry Belafonte talked about this in his particular book, Sing a Song. He said, he said his mother worked hard as all get out 
and could not escape poverty. Some of the hardest working people in America, working way more harder than the top 1%, are in poverty. But when you give that attitude of, and then of course you t compare that, take that, and pair it with his comments on the housing tour, we've made things too comfortable. Right. Folks in housing. I mean, roaches he, are comfortable. I mean, he literally sounded like, "Hey, just slide them a piece of bread and some water, and, uh, and put them on a cement bed, because otherwise, any other comfort creatures, oh, that that's too comfortable for and people in housing." And that's, that's so crazy. Segue. Rolla, that's so segues with Mick Mulvaney's remarks about the budget, where he talks about people need to work. If you're disabled, but you're faking, I don't know too many people who fake disability. If you're disabled, but you're faking, you need to work. No matter who you are, you need to work. But the fact of the matter is, people do work. But if you earn seven dollars and twenty-five cents an hour, right. which is the federal minimum wage, you can work in your sleep, and you are still not going to get out of poverty. If you have you know, you're, you're working at a big box store where they won't give you the 40 hours or the 35 hours that give you the health insurance that you need. So you're making decisions. Do I buy shoes for my oldest son or do I bu buy books for my youngest daughter? You cannot work your way out of that. We have created a space that is hostile to poor people and, and Carson basically exacerbates and that. And here's the problem. The Trump administration has decided Carson is going to be their point man on all poverty issues related to this administration. But they did that on purpose. That's why they put a brain surgeon to do housing and urban development because they <laughs> knew that he didn't know what he was doing and that he unfortunately represents uh, the majority of black America since he's one of the black people in the administration. He well, and Omarosa. And you Republicans, I'm going to talk, I mean, I love y'all. We, we all kick it. But let me say this. You have allowed an imposter to come in under the umbrella of your party to pimp our presidents, to, let me repeat myself, pimp our presidents, and y'all are, she's a Democrat, y'all Republicans, how come y'all won't stand up for yourself? First of all, you got a Democrat that just became a Republican not too long ago, I don't even think the ink's dry on his registration card, who ended up running for president and, and winning. Also, and That's the first one. The second, too. hold on, the second thing is, you have a whole lot of Democrats and independents that allowed him to win Republican primaries in open primary states that allowed him to get the momentum he needed to beat good Republican candidates, people like Jeb Bush and others that were not talking some of this nonsense. Yeah. So let's not put it all on the feet of Republicans. If you want to talk about what happened in 2015 you, and 2016, oh, I've I been out there. I've I been on the front lines for I want to see some of y'all others. So, but, 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 but one second, hold on. I will say this here, and Ralph, you know I have challenged you on this many times. I challenged Bishop Harry Jackson on this as well. I keep going back to this. I have yet to see, because I have, because I'll be there with my cameras. I have yet to see a major news conference of, of prominent Black Republicans standing unified, mm -hmm. calling out the party on voter suppression, right. calling yes. out right. this ridiculous budget on cutting uh, minority businesses, mm -hmm. calling out the promises with HBCUs right. not fulfilling them, and then saying to, to Dr. Ben Carson. Dude, you sound crazy making these comments. And you said, hey, we've called some people. Uh, we've had Gianno Caldwell on here, Brandon Cooper on here. And oh, people say individually we've done this. But I'm saying, where's the collective right. call you, to action? Roll, you bring, you bring it, one second, one second. Oh, oh, yeah. You bring your cameras, I'll put it together. Y'all okay. right. put yeah. it together, we're there, and I'll live okay. stream it. Okay. No, and, and to the whole rap, answer, no, no, for, no, don't answer her. Answer my question. <laughs> well, no, I'll, I'll, I'll do both. I've asked you this multiple times. When will that happen? Rolling they squirt. One second. When will that happen? When will you, J.C. Watts, and numerous others stand up and say, look, we are not going to be silent about this, we will be speaking to our party the same way Colin Powell did when he went to North Carolina and chastised the governor for that voter suppression bill. I, I'm on record criticizing not this Not you. you that's what you're asking. Oh, hold on, hold on. No, I'm not. I'm asking you I, about I, a collective, I, 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 not you as an record. individual. And I, I went, we're talking about back to the campaign, I have, I'm on record saying Donald Trump is Ralph? no conservative and he's but, barely but a Republican. Lenny, go ahead. And Lenny, go ahead. Oh, here's, no, no. here's the condition. One, I, we don't agree with you. Here's the condition. I'll, I'll take lead on this. But the condition I'm going to put out there for non-black Republican African Americans is this. When we take a stand as Republicans against the party and you all take a step back and be like, well, I don't know if I can stand with that brother even though what he's saying is right. We end up taking five steps back in our career. Sometimes it affects our money. Sometimes it affects our public 
image, I'm a public figure. I know I've gone through that for 10 years. So I'm going to say that when we do this, you all need to step up as well. I'm saying we are, we are let united. Me, let me and we will do this. perfectly clear. I've covered this stuff on this show. I know you have. No, multiple people. And I can tell you right now, y'all do that. You'll be on Tom Jones on the Morning Show. You'll be on this show. But uh, but again, as long as Black Republicans are silent collectively, I didn't say individually. No, I, I hear you 100%. Then I think you're gonna still see well, folks this happen. A peaceful protest turned deadly. 37 year old Black man was shot and killed by Baton Rouge police. Your hands are in the air, and you still get shot by the cops. Oh my God! Please don't tell me he's dead. We're not gonna let hate define us. Race is a big part of this. If truly all lives matter, then all lives need to matter equally. What we require is action. What we require is accountability. We understand that black lives do matter. And we will keep focused on this issue. News One Now, every weekday morning at 7 on TV One.